Hello and welcome to your in-depth weekly horoscope for week commencing the 3rd of October. This is for the Sun or the Ascendant. I'm going to give you the broad themes to look out for, but please stay with me. I will go through each of the 12 zodiac signs to give you in much greater detail the key influences for each. Now this week sees Pluto end its retrograde, which began on the 29th of April. Pluto is also going to be linking with Mercury, the planet of communication, now traveling forwards and gaining traction in the sign of Virgo. And that's very much about clarity and precision. And the combination of these two can, if we choose to embrace their joint power, can help us to probe, to research, and to get really clear about some important strands in our situations. The problem is that Mars in the bright and bubbly Gemini is in a right angle with Neptune. And Neptune in the 12th solar house for us all in a square with Mars in the third suggests that some of our desires can come from the subconscious, but also we may read or hear things. People may uh, even indulge in gossip with this particular aspect, and that can then inform some of our other actions and Mars of course is very much about desire. So that combination between Mercury and Pluto gives us a chance to try to make sense of some of the confusing energies that could be washing around. I mean one of the things that could happen with Mars square in Neptune which goes on for the whole of October and the whole of November within three degrees is that we can lose power. Our physical vitality is lower and our thinking around our clarity can be blunted because of course like Virgo, Gemini is ruled where Mars is by Mercury, the planet of communication. So there is a real uh, contra flow energy going on between these two sets of influences. Also, of course, Saturn and Uranus, which were so prominent in 2021 and at the start of 2022, are within one minute of being exactly square all through this week. So that in itself is something we need to really be conscious of. Uranus in the sign of Taurus, which is very much about land. It can be about food. It can be even about fashion, but obviously very much about daily money and our budgets. That's being challenged by Saturn in the sign of the collective, the sign of Aquarius. So we're all feeling the pinch. There are a lot of headwinds around the cost of living. Some of them, of course, are coming about because of mismanagement by governments. It's not all to do with what we're doing as consumers. There are decisions that have been made which aren't necessarily for uh, most of our benefit. And of course, the war in Ukraine is also having an impact too. But that particular aspect, the one thing about it is that we've had a lot of practice to deal with it. But it will play out in each of the zodiac signs in its own way. And I will share about each of those uh, in much greater detail. Now, towards the end of this week, the sun starts to go into a really fantastic grand air trine between Saturn, which it's very close to being in trine with, and a bit broader with Mars. And that gives us an opportunity to use the expressive and air energies of each of those planets where they're located in Gemini, in the Sun in Libra, and of course uh, Saturn in Aquarius, to use the air energy of each of those in a really productive way. And on Sunday there is the full moon in the sign of Aries, and it is going to be in opposition with the Sun, which is pretty much in close contact with Venus, which governs the sign of Libra. Now, if you'd like to know much more about this particular full moon, please see below and you can check out my deep dive special video. But essentially, I think that Venus softens some of the potential tension that this full moon can create each year. But I think the Aries full moon 
is asking us to think about what we want as individuals. And the moon in Aries can be very immediate. It's not very considered. It's quite an urgent energy. Whereas the Sun and Venus close together in Libra are asking us to think about how we interact with others, how we balance things, how we disseminate information, uh, how we embrace fairness, because those are very Libran energies. But I think the worst of this particular full moon is mitigated somewhat by Venus, but the wider influences at play on this particular event are quite challenging. And of course, uh, one of those is Mars squaring with Neptune. So please join me for that deep dive. But if you would like to ascend above this Zodiac broadcast and understand what year 2023 will hold for you personally, if you give me three pieces of personal birth data, of time, date and place of birth, I can give you your forecast for 23, but you'll get the rest of year 2022 free. Plus you'll get your roadmap, your character analysis, which can guide you for the rest of your life and help you to seize opportunities, but also understand more of some of the patterns that may have developed in your life, which are not so easy. And there's 30% off with my special package. Please see the link below. Finally, if you are new to my channel, I'd be honored if you would subscribe. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. And if you're an ongoing viewer, thank you so much for joining me. So Libra, your week commencing the 3rd of October forecast sees a full moon in your opposite sign. But it also is a week when Venus, your ruler, although not in an exact conjunction with the sun in your sign, it's in pretty close uh, proximity. In the natal horoscope, it would definitely be considered to be in conjunction. But by the end of the week, Venus is catching up with the sun. And then, of course, there is the full moon in your opposite sign. Someone could kind of push back against you a little bit this week, may feel that you're not doing quite as much as you feel you're doing. Um, but the way they do so probably will be not too harshly. I think Venus being in your sign is, is going to give you an awful lot of uh, allure. So, you know, just in an everyday situation, you could find that even if there is something that needs to be discussed that's a bit tricky, Venus being so close to the sun could give you some extra protection. People will find your charm very disarming. However, of course, Saturn and Uranus are in that crunching right angle once more. And this can bring much more sharply into focus any issues you have about romance or about deep commitments or about giving away your independence. But at the same time, you know, the Sun and Venus is amplifying your magnificence. Life can be complex and difficult at times, can't it? You know, you can be such a giver, you can be so tuned into other people's needs, but at this particular time, someone may still want a bit more from you. Could be frustrating, or you could decide not to take it personally. In fact, with Mars in that square with Neptune, I feel that, uh, a deeper part of what's going on at the moment is if you've been very dedicated and very giving to people, and I think a lot of Librans have since 2012, there's a part of you at the moment is just finding it harder and harder to just do what you've done in the past, even if part of you is still up for it. You just don't seem to have the vitality to keep giving in that same way. With Mercury in your 12th house, in a complex but very helpful angle to Pluto. This could see you having some very deep thoughts, but it also can see you making some magnificent connections and understanding the machinations of life and people's uh, way of being really helpfully. So once Pluto goes direct at the end of this week and the full moon occurs in your opposite sign, yes, it could shine a light where someone feels you're still not doing enough, but you know, even if they feel like that, you just may not feel that you have the inner resources to do much more. But if you do say no, or you set a boundary, which is what this full moon is essentially about, getting the balance between giving and getting in relationships, I think you can do it in a way that most people 
will probably accept at face value.